Hello and welcome to Mark's Woodworking Challenges. I'm Mark, your host, and today we have a hand plane challenge. We are going to explore the various functionalities of a Stanley 41 combination plane. Now what got me started on this is I realized the other day that I have the version that has the filister bed, this part right here, and I had never actually sharpened the cutter and used it to make a filister. By the way, in, throughout this video I'm going to say filister. That's, I have no idea if that's the right pronunciation. Filitzer, filate, filatzer, who knows? I have no clue. Furthermore, I'm going to spell it as it is spelled in the Stanley 1884 catalog. So just want to get that clear at the outset. Okay, where were we? Um, so I had never actually made a Phillips. Uh, used it as a fillet, sir. And so I thought, well, why not? I'll sharpen the cutter and and see how it works, see how well it does. And I just, I just went down a rabbit hole. So now normally what I do in a in a video like this is I start out by describing the plane in detail. I'm not going to do that here. Um, there's a YouTube video by a person called Chester Spear who does a very nice description of a Stanley 42, which is basically identical to this one except for being made of gunmetal instead of iron. And so I'm going to reference his video. I can't do any better than what he did. I can't add anything to what he presented. So I'm going to send you over there to, to learn about the various parts and, and so on and so forth about the Stanley 41 and 42. So what got me started on this was, as I said, I wanted to just Try this thing out as a fillet, a filletser plane. But after thinking about it for a minute, I thought, well, I might as well make sure I understand all the other functionality of this plane while I'm at it. And of course, that begs the question: Well, what is what is this plane supposed to be used for? In the catalog. It's listed as being able to do filitzer, plow, matching, and slitting. Now it doesn't specifically say rabbit, although if you can do a filitzer, I thought, well, you surely must be able to do a rabbit. So I threw, that, I put that on the list as well. And so we're going to go through each of these modes of operation except for slitting because as a type 4 Stanley 41 this plane did not come with a slitter that was not introduced until uh, a later date and then I thought well it's this would be a good time to review how it compares to other Stanley 41 planes and so I made a little table with the catalog description of each plane, the year introduced, and how much did it cost in 1884. And 1884 is a good year because they had just introduced the Stanley 45. They had already introduced the Stanley 46. And so you can compare and contrast a Stanley 41, a 43, a 46, and a 45 all in the same year of production. And already that led to some interesting observations. So one is the 41 
of those four planes, the 41 is the most expensive. $9 versus 7 to 8 for the other three. The Philitzer, you could have a 41 or a 43, and they only vary by whether they come with the Philitzer bed. The Philitzer bed must have been worth about $2 because a Stanley 43, which has no Philitzer bed, is $7, and the Stanley 41 is $9. So you could, if you didn't care about making a Philitzer, you could save a couple bucks. The 46 came out only three years after the 41 in 1874, which seems like a pretty quick introduction after what presumably was sort of a, 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 a premier plane being introduced in, in 1871. So that got me thinking, well, why is that? And so we're going to go into that in just a little bit. Lastly, the Stanley 45 is sort of in between these two at $8 in 1884. And it does significantly more things, beating as well as rabbits, filitzers, dados, plows, matching, and slitting. So already we can get a hint as to why the 45 eventually became the dominant combination plane. Okay, so let's use the plane on each of those functions and see how well it works. Let's get right to it. Okay, first up, let's just make a simple groove with the grain of the wood. The cutters that the 41 uses are these. I love these cutters. They are a nice thick cutter, just like a wooden plow plane. You just can just you can just feel the authority they have when they slice through the wood. Not, n not prone to chatter at all. The, the, it, the skate basically mates with this groove in the bottom of the cutter. Um, I have it equipped with the optional plowing fence. Now technically you can use the Philitzer, Philitzer fence to do this job. Although if you were lucky enough to have both of these fences, you probably looked at this one and said, yeah, holy cow, that looks like a break waiting to happen. There are definitely some weak links on this. I don't know if, if word of that spread, but it, it, this is a known phenomenon with the Philitzer fences is that they're more fragile. So certainly in my case I'm sticking with the plow, plowing fence. So let's uh, let's see how it works. I got a piece of poplar here. I'm not going to do very much but we'll yeah you just can't do better than that. Now I should note here that I have it set for a fairly rank cut. And this is an, a, a, an important point. If you're trying to finish the surface of the wood with a smoothing plane, generally the idea is to, is to take very fine shavings, you know, a thousand, two thousand, only a few thousands thick. But when you're trying to make a groove or something in a board, you know, you probably going to make, you know, let's say it's a quarter of an inch deep that, that you're aiming for. If you have only a thousandth inch thick shaving and you've got to do 250 thousandths inches of depth, well that means you're going to have to make 250 passes to reach your depth, which is obviously ridiculous. So 
any plow plane of this type it's got to be able to take a rank cut pretty easily so that you can make progress in a reasonable amount of time so th the last thing I'm going to say is that I'll put another reference in the in the notes uh, there's a gentleman out there who attached a GoPro to his Stanley 41 which I thought was kind of cool and you can also you can just get more examples of how nicely it functions as a as a grooving plane so there you have it grooving check it works fine now while we're at it the next thing is the grooving a groove as I said is with the grain of the wood a dado is across uh, it's, it's also just a groove but it's across the grain of the wood these planes are not dado planes in order to go make a dado you have to be able to score the grain on each side of the groove before the cutter can cut it and on these planes there is no knicker or any knife-like attachment that will score the sides of the dado and allow the cutter to lift out the wood so so the dado part is easy it doesn't it isn't it doesn't it won't ever cut a dado okay so those are the basic grooves with the grain and across the grain let's move on to rabbits and fillisters Look, to review the tech terminology, a rabbit is a corner, basically a groove cut into the corner, for want of a better word, with the grain, a step, if you will, whereas a filitzer is the exact same thing, only across the grain. Very much analogous to grooves and dados. Now the 41 is not really set up to do rabbits. There's, as, I, as near as I can figure, there are two ways to do this. One is you use a regular cutter and you'll notice that the regular cutter is, there's no way to make the side of it even with the side of the skate but if you pair that with the fillet fence you can sort of cut a rabbit in this mode obviously you can't use the plowing fence because the plowing fence has no cutout for the for the for the blade but this fillet surface will sort of work and it sort of cuts a rabbit. I'll demonstrate. There we go. So you can see our rabbit is forming. Actually, you know, not really doing too bad, even though I am, I will just about guarantee that this is not what they intended people to do, how they intended for people in 1876 to make a rabbit with a Stanley 41. So there you have it. If you're desperate to make a rabbit and this is all you've got, yes, you can probably uh, do that you can get it done you're gonna have trouble avoiding the uh, sort of typical rabbit problem where the, you can get stair steps in the side of the rabbit um, but nonetheless 
you can see that it's, it sort of worked. So the other way of doing this would be to use the Filitzer bed. And we will demonstrate that in just a moment when I ch so I'm going to go off camera and change out for the Filitzer bed. Okay, now we've got it set up in with the Filitzer bed and the Filitzer fence. And in my opinion, this is where the wheels start to come off the bus. So, first of all, this does look more like a rabbit plane now. As you can see, the cutter is now flush with the side of the plane so you can imagine the thing running along the side of the rabbit and maintaining proper indexing. But already one problem I ran into is there's no way to adjust the cutter with the fence in place it runs in to if you have the fence there on any reasonable size rabbit like up to three quarters of an inch you have the only way you could do this is if you moved it that far out so that you could get the screwdriver in to loosen the the, the bolt that holds the cutter in place so so there's a serious problem the only way I could adjust the cutter was to take the fence completely off, as I'll demonstrate right now, to see if it was in proper adjustment. I would basically take the fence off and, and do shavings like this. And, you know, it's, it's not a bad adjustment. It's basically, uh, probably still could use some work. So I had to do that. I had to take the fence off to loosen the bolt and adjust the cutter. And then on top of that, adjusting this cutter is, is a right pain in the butt. There's no, like, tapping or anything that you can do to retract or... I suppose you could tap on this side of the cutter to push it down but there's no way to retract it you're basically having to use finger power to both adjust the depth as well as to make sure that it's flush with the sole of the Filitzer bed I found it to be extremely difficult it took me a lot of futzing around to get it uh, basically adjusted to where it does a decent job um, one last thing to say about the wheels coming off the bus is it, it, we now have a knicker for scoring the grain. It's this little thing right here. It's a little cutter in a dovetailed recess on the Filitzer bed. And probably when it was new that would score ahead of the cutter to go across the grain. I tried to get this thing out and you know it's I, I do not have the equipment to do that. It is welded in there as tight as you can imagine. So you know I have no way of taking it out and sharpening it so that it makes sure it would score cross grain to do a good job scoring across the grain. So there's another sort of design issue with cutting a Filitzer. But at any rate, uh, if with enough futzing, you can get the cutter adjusted. You can put the fence back on.
You can set it for about a three-eighths of an inch rabbit. Tighten your nuts, or your knobs, I should say, on the fence. And not doing too bad. You know, not great. Yeah, I, that's working. Can't argue with it. So even though they didn't specifically mention cutting rabbits as a function, obviously it does cut rabbits. Now one thing I will say is that this piece of poplar is very well behaved. With this exact same depth setting, I ran into some, I, I, I was not having as easy a time with either pine or walnut. So I was getting a lot of chatter. I don't think the cutter is super well bedded, but I guess it's maybe not too bad. But I had trouble with other woods. So when it comes to making a rabbit with this arrangement, your mileage may vary, although it obviously did very well with the poplar. All right, so even though we can't score very well with the dull knicker on this thing, let's uh, give it a quick test to make a Philitzer. Okay, we're ready to test it on a Philitzer. Let's see how it works. Actually, I had while off camera, I had to adjust the cutter a little bit. It wasn't taking a heavy enough cut, but here we go. We're across the grain now, so that's a fillet, sir. It's, uh, you can see it's gone down there. It's working. We're taking cuttings. Uh, I'm not, not sure I'm... There we go. Probably needs some more adjustment, but you can see that it's basically it's got the functionality, let me put it that way. Would I select this as my dedicated fillet plane? Not a chance. Okay, so there you have it. Rabbits and fillitzers. I guess it works, although I have significant reservations. Okay, our last function test is matching. And I have it set up with the tongue cutter in the plane. Now you have to use, here the plowing fence won't work again if you, you need to have the fence register against the side of the workpiece so that, that you can get the tongue in the right place you have to have clearance under here for that to happen so got to use the uh, Philitzer fence. Um, one thing I was going to point out on any of the grooving operations is you can certainly tighten this thing your, your, your hold down nut, hold down knob I should say you know by all means tighten it firmly but this is one place where you don't want to crank down on it too much or else this uh, 
this piece here is known to be susceptible to breaking probably when people take a pair of pliers and clamp down on it so if it's not if the cutter tends to slide back in here and you've tightened it you know reasonably tight well it, do me a favor and go go sharpen your cutter it that doesn't need to be cranked down on and you'll just come to grief if you do so at any rate I, you can see that the, t the tongue cutter extends out to the side here quite a bit, but we'll give it a shot and see what happens. Actually, I already tried it. Yep, making a tongue just, uh, actually that's pretty good, really. I can't complain. So there would be half of your matching operation and then on the other half, you would just stick the quarter inch cutter in there instead and, and make a matching groove on the other side. But matching seems to work fine. We have tested all the functions of the Stanley 41 combination plane, save for slitting, which this plane does not have a slitter, so we have cut grooves, we've cut fillets, we've cut tongues. Uh, in general, to summarize, uh, it cuts, it's a great grooving plane. It is non-functional for dados. It can cut rabbits. And it can cut fillets. And it and lastly, it actually performed a little better than my expectation for cutting fillet uh, for cutting tongues. However, the problem is not whether it would cut a rabbit or a fillitzer. The problem is that the ease of doing so, the practicality of using this fillitzer bed left a lot to be desired in my opinion. So yes it'll do it but you won't be happy. Is that why the Stanley 46 came out so quickly? they realized that they had produced a beautiful product designed to appeal to the Joe Carpenter in the street but that it doesn't it just wasn't it it had such design flaws that they were going to be unhappy and switch over to the competition or something I don't know but it's an intriguing thought if you ask me so also so Stanley moved on even if it, even if that's not the reason they introduced new combination planes it is true that the Stanley 41 the Miller's patent planes apparently were more expensive to produce and so eventually the cheaper more functional planes like the 45 were sort of destined to win out I would love to hear opinions about this sort of uh, conclusion. All right, so that will do it for this video. Please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and by all means leave comments. And so without further ado, we'll see you next time on Mark's Woodworking Challenges.